So that's it. We finished the first part of this review of module one. Now we see how we can take advantage of the fact that you know the bending moment at in strain hinged or roller support. How do we do this? So we're now looking at an extreme end element in a continuous beam. Take a look at this element AB. At B, usually you don't have any moment, but it's possible you may have a moment. For example, you may have a cantilever, an overhang, and that overhang will induce a moment, typically a clockwise moment. So whatever it is, MBA is something known. It's either zero or some known quantity. We should take advantage of this a priori knowledge. We know this in advance. How do we do that? Well, you have theta A and theta B, and we say that let's pretend that we don't need to find out theta B. MAB we don't know. So if you write down the conventional slope deflection equation for MAB and MBA, the second equation should give you a value which is known beforehand, MBA. So we don't want to use that equation. We just want to find MAB, MBA is known. So we do that by saying that we no longer treat theta B as an unknown, although we don't know theta B, but we don't need to know theta B because our objective is to draw the bending moment diagram. Our objective is not to find theta B. There's a way of finding theta B also if you really want to, but let's skip that. And so we don't want to waste time finding MB. We know, take advantage of the hinge support in moment distribution method. But for some reason, people have forgotten to take advantage of the slope result. The book that I've written clearly shows you should take the same advantage in this method. So how do you do that? Well, once you make a decision that I don't treat theta b as an unknown anymore, then my kinematically determinate structure, my primary structure should also reflect this understanding, which means I don't arrest theta b. I let it be what it is. So this becomes my element a b in which I arrest theta a for sure because I don't know m a b, but I don't touch B. I leave B the way it was in the original structure. It's a roller support or a hinge support. I leave it like that. And then I put the loads on it. MBA is known. Now remember, I need to first find the fixed end moment MFAB. But this MFAB will be affected. Normal fixed end moments assume that the prismatic beam is fixed at both ends. Here, the fixed end moment that you need is a modified fixed end moment where the end B is free to rotate. In other words, you need the fixed end moment in a propped cantilever subject to the same load. That's the picture shown here. And there could be a moment at B if it's given in advance. So you must be able to handle a problem like this. And we, to distinguish normal fixed end moment MFAB with the fixed end moment in a propped cantilever, we put a subscript after MF as MF naught. Can you see that? MF naught AB. MF naught AB is the new notation we will use. And we define it as a modified fixed end moment where the far end B is treated as. How to find these fixed end moments? We'll see in shortly. Now, according to the slope deflection method, to derive the equation, we need to apply principle of superposition. So we take the same primary structure and we now allow theta A to occur, say by means of a rotational slip, do that and you get a diagram like this. And when that happens, you get a moment at A, which is not 4 EIBL into theta A because B is free to rotate. It is 3 EIBL to theta A from our first derivative. That's all you need to know. That's it. So your slope deflection equation, your modified slope deflection equation, when the far end B is in, is MAB is equal to MF not AB. Remember that not, that not is actually meant to remind you there's a hinge at the other end. B plus 3i by L into theta. 
Now, it's quite possible that you have situations where the extreme left end is a hinge support. In other words, A could be hinge. Well, that shouldn't create a problem. If you have a picture like this, where the hinge support is at end A, then now MAB is known. Theta A, you don't want to know. You have to write an equation for MBA, and that is obvious. It's going to be MBA equal to MF naught BA plus 3 EI by L into theta. That's all you need to know. And MF naught BA is a modified fixed end moment with MBA. Okay, now before we proceed, let's fix this at hinge A. Let's say you have a problem where MBA is not. That by itself is going to give you a fixed end moment at A. We know what that is. What is that? That is very easy. That MF naught AB due to MBA known will be half of MBA with the same direction. You remember? This came from the stiffness derivation. So that's simply MBA by C. Very easy. Same direction. If MBA is clockwise, MF naught AB will also be clockwise. If MBA is anticlockwise, MF naught BA, MF naught AB will be whatever it is going to be exactly half the value of the applied moment at B. So we've dealt with this case. Now we'll deal with cases of intermediate loading, arbitrary loading, let's say a funny loading like that. We know already the solution for this when N B is also fixed. Can we take advantage of that? Sure, we can. How do we do that? Well, to do that, to find out MF naught AB, we do a little superposition. First, we take what we know. We have tables or we have methods like conjugate B method, which help us find out the fixed end moment when both ends are fixed. And the terminology uses MF AB, MF B. Let's say we know MF AB and MF B. With this knowledge, how do we find MF naught AB? Very simple. You invoke case one. All you do is you do a superposition where you allow B to rotate hmm? by how much? By MFBA in the opposite direction, anti clockwise. Okay, so that when you add up these two cases, you end up with, with a moment at B which is zero. Because there is no applied moment at B. But when you do this MFBA at the end B in a reverse direction, you end up with a fixed end moment at A which is half that value. So that is all you have to do. Now if you do superposition of, of uh, this with this, you get this. Check out. Check the slopes. Theta A is 0 here. Theta A is 0 here. So superposition says theta A is 0. At B, theta B is 0 plus theta B will give you the theta B here. No problem. Fixed end moment at B, here it is MFBA, here it is minus MFBA, it adds up to 0. No problem. At A, this is MFAB, but now you have to subtract or put a minus MFBA by 2 to get this. So that's all. That's all you get. And so the Fixed end moment in a prop cantilever is very simple. It's the same fixed end moment in a fixed fixed beam. You have to add a minus MFBA by 2. But be careful. That minus might turn out uh, to be plus in the sense if MFAB itself is minus, then minus of minus will add up. So here itself we know that if you have symmetric loading, let's say a UDL or a concentrated load, then Take a UDL. According to this, if you have a UDL, Q naught L squared by 12 is on the left side. MFAB is minus Q naught L squared by 12. MFPA is plus Q naught L squared by 12. So the net result, MF naught AB will be the conventional fixed end moment with the same. So it's minus Q naught L squared by 8 or minus Q naught L squared by 12 into 3 by 2. Very easy way to remember. So, unsymmetrical loading, for example, this case, that's what you do. Simply add up symmetrical loading, as I just explained, it's one and a half. 
easy to remember. Right? So, we can now proceed to solving problems. I hope this is clear. Once you keep practicing this method, it's, you'll find it's very powerful. It reduces this problem we did yesterday. Remember, when the B N C is hinged or on a roller support, we did this by treating theta B and theta C as unknown. We had to solve two simultaneous equations. A little extra work compared to when C was fixed. Now, no extra work. We take advantage of the fact that M C B is 0. We know it in advance. We do not need to in, impose this as an equilibrium equation. We take advantage of this. And so, we have done this before the shapes of the diagrams. So, how do we solve this problem? We have only one rotation unknown theta. Theta A is given, theta C we do not care. And we write down the fixed moments. In this case, there are no fixed moments because there is no loading. The loading is an indirect loading caused by a support slip. I told you in yesterday's class that there are two kinds of loads that you can get on a structure. One is direct action, although the arrow marks that are shown in your question paper. The other is indirect. One of the indirect loads is caused by support movements, settlements or rotation. Now, you write down the slope deflection equations for A, B and B. For A, B, we are doing exactly what we did yesterday. No change. Conventional slope deflection equations, M, A, B is equal to M, F, A, B plus 4 E, I by L into theta A plus 2 E, I by L into theta B. M, B, A is M, F, B, A plus 2 E, I by L into theta A plus 4 E, I by L into theta B. Plug in those values, you have got an unknown theta B. There is no theta c coming in any way because a b does not have theta c. Now, when you write the equation for m b c, you take advantage of the fact that c is hinged, you invoke the modified slope deflection equation, and they should be written like this m b c is m f naught b c plus 3 e i by l into theta b, and m c b is known to be 0, 0 kilonewton. So, you have only one unknown, MFBC is 0, so it is MBC is simply 3 by 2 into EI theta B. That is it. Next step, you invoke your equilibrium equation. One unknown theta B, so the equilibrium equation is MBA plus MBC is 0. Take the equation for MBA, take the equation for MBC, add up those two values, solve for EI theta B, plug in that into your answer. Slope deflection equation, we've got all the answers. These answers are exactly what we got yesterday. So we are getting the same result with approximately half the effort. We don't solve two simultaneously. Now imagine a condition where there was another span to the left of only one theta b unknown. But your degree of indeterminacy is one. Whereas if you do it by the old conventional method, your degree of indeterminacy is three. Your three rotation. Uh, so this is much simpler. Go ahead and solution is the same. I don't waste time. We did this yesterday. Deflection diagram. Here, no sagging moment. And see how the points of contraflexure are matching. Uh, there should be no point of contraflexure in BC because there's a hinge there. 